Hi folks, this is a Cloud Security Masterclass and today we are discussing uh, hashing, digital signatures and how these two security technologies enable log file integrity in AWS CloudTrail. So first, why should we even care about log integrity? I have pinned down here three security incidents that underscore the importance of log integrity. In 2011, Sony's PlayStation Network suffered a massive hack, compromising 77 million user accounts, leading to a 23-day service shutdown, significant financial losses, legal actions, and damage to the company's reputation. Attackers likely altered logs to hide their activity, which was an important reason why the issue was not detected earlier. Similarly, in 2017 breach of Equifax, around 147 million people's data was exposed due to an unpatched vulnerability. And again, tempered logs delayed the investigation. Or take Uber's example, where a few Uber folks purposely covered up the breach to avoid regulatory detections. Lessons learned from these security horror stories is that ensuring tamper-proof logs could have helped detect the breach much earlier, and Enabling strong integrity measures could have helped track the breach timeline and scope much faster. Okay, let's learn what hashing means. So hashing is a very simple mathematical function which is used in security to convert an input data into a fixed length string called hash using a hashing algorithm. Now there are multiple hashing algorithms out here. SHA-256, which is shown in this picture, is one of them and widely used because it is much more secure. And yes, if you're thinking, hashing algorithms can be insecure as well. So you need to use the right one, but that's a topic for a different video. To see how hashing works, consider this text. This is a lab of cloudsecuritymasterclass.com. We run this uh, text as an input to the SHA-256 algorithm, and it converts this text into a unique 256-bit long string, which is shown here in the hex format. Now keep in mind these three key characteristics about hashing. Number one, regardless of the size of your input, the output of a hashing function is always of same length. So your input might be a single word like lab, or it might be a sequence of words, or it might be an entire book of text. The hash is always of the same length. For SHA-256, it is always 256 bit long. Second characteristic to keep in mind is that the hash value is unique for each input. So even if you change the input ever so slightly, it should always produce a different hash value. That's the magic of maths. The final superpower of hashing is that it is irreversible. This means that anybody with the input data can run the hashing algorithm to produce the hash value. However, someone with just the hash value cannot reverse engineer the hashing algorithm to get to the original data. So how is hashing used in data security? It is used to detect data tampering. Sender sends this, the data and the computed hash of the data to the receiver. The receiver also computes the hash on their own and compare it with the received hash value. If there is a match, the data has not been tempered during transmission. But hashing alone is not enough to ensure data integrity. Why? Because the delivery of the data and the hash, if used without secure authentication, is prone to man-in-the-middle attack. A man-in-the-middle attacker could intercept the hash, alter the original message, and send a new hash of the altered message thus compromising the integrity of the whole system. And that is where my friends, Digital Signatures comes in to help. Digital Signatures incorporate hashing and also use public-private cryptography keys to verify the authenticity of the sender. Let me provide a simple example of this process. The sender first generates a public and private key pair. The private key is kept safe and secure with the sender, while the public key is made available to be accessed by anyone. Sender then encrypts the hash value with the private key and sends this encrypted hash along with the data. Now the receiver would decrypt the encrypted hash with the public key and verify if it matches the hash of the data that it received. This provides protection against MITM attack as the encryption could only be done by the sender who owns the private key. All right, guys, now having learned the basics of hashing and digital signatures, let's turn our attention to AWS CloudTrail. 
and see how these security concepts are used in a practical system to ensure log data integrity. Before we get started, here are some resources from my channel on AWS CloudTrail that might be beneficial to your overall learning in this topic. For foundational knowledge about CloudTrail, read my article, AWS CloudTrail, your one-stop shop for comprehensive AWS logging. Next, watch my video demo on how to audit data events with CloudTrail. And finally, if you're ready to go a little deeper, watch another video demo about CloudTrail Lake, which is a recent AWS feature. So folks, if you enable log data integrity in CloudTrail, here are the four steps that AWS uses to enable log file data integrity. Step one, AWS first creates a hash for each of the CloudTrail log file using a cryptographic algorithm as we discussed previously, example SHA-256. This hash now acts as a unique fingerprint for each of the log files. Step two, AWS now groups the hashes from multiple log files into a single file called digest file, which also includes other metadata like timestamps, log sequences, etc. Then AWS uses its private key to sign the digest file. The created digital signature proves that the digest is authentic and from AWS. And finally, users recalculate log file hashes and use AWS's public key to verify the digital signature. If the log file hashes and the digest digital signature match, it proves that the logs are authentic and untampered. Alrighty, drum roll, it's demo time. In the demo, we'll be taking a close look at these four steps. By first creating a CloudTrail with log file integrity feature enabled, then verifying the hashes and the digest file that AWS creates for us, and finally, verifying the integrity of the created log file by verifying the hashes and the digital signature. So let's start. I'm logged in to the AWS console and I am in the cloud trail section. I have clicked on create a new trail and I've given this trail a name. And as you can see, we're working off the US first one region. I will click on create a new S3 bucket. So I want this trail to create a new bucket for me. Let's give this bucket a name. And then this is the option that we are most interested in in this demo, which is the log file validation option. We'll click on enabled and enable this. And if you read the description, this is exactly what we have been discussing as part of this video, um, that hashing using SHA-256 and uh, digital signatures using RSA is what is used by AWS to enable log file validation. So we'll keep this enabled and go down, keep the defaults as it is and click on next. In the event type, we will use the management events and I will run some API calls in the background to, to generate some data for this cloud trail. Uh, so finally, we'll click on create trail. And with that, our trail is created, uh, which has log file integrity enabled. And let's go to the S3 bucket now and see the contents of that bucket. I have run some API calls in the backend, so we should have some dummy data. And if you go into the S3 bucket, we can see that there are two different folders here. One is the CloudTrail folder that contains all of your log files. And the other is your digest file, which is all the hash file of all of your log files in a single digest file. So if we click on both of these, let's try to verify and see what are the contents of these. Right. The CloudTrail one, as we have seen in our other demos, contain all the log files and we'll go to the US East one region where I have done a bunch of API calls, so we should see some dummy data. And we can see that there are a number of log files already existing here. And if you note the timestamp um, of these files, these are uh, the earliest time is uh, 11.40, that's my local time, and the latest one is 12.09. Uh, and uh, if we open the digest file now, uh, we can see that the digest files are actually running a little behind. The, the last modified time for this digest file is 11.35. So, and the reason for that is that the digest files are created by AWS every hour. So you might have log files created, but the digest files will take some time to come, uh, come through. So let me open the digest file that we have right now using my JSON pretty print and show you the contents of this. Now, uh, this one gives you information about the account ID, all the metadata for this log file. And you can see the start time, the end time, you know, the S3 bucket and the object. Uh, but what's interesting in this 
uh, digest file is that it's pretty empty. You don't actually see the hashes. You don't actually see the log files here. Uh, and that's the reason for that is that it's still uh, waiting. The array is still catching up for with those log files. So what we have to do is we have to wait another hour so um, for the digest to be uh, ready. And so I'll pause this video and come back when we see more data, which is around 1235 my local time. So it's been almost an hour and uh, let me click on refresh on this page and um, sure enough we can see the the new log file created as predicted at 12.35 uh, my local time. So let's open up this new uh, digest file and verify its contents. Um, yeah, I have opened the file in pretty print and as you can see immediately there are more details here than what were available before and um, interesting thing to note is the newest event time and the oldest event time this is the actual time when the event occurred so now it's actually uh, storing details about the cloud, cloud trail logs and you also have the digest start time and end time at the top as well um, the key thing to note about this and you might be asking this is where is actually the hashes of the log files and those are visible if you go down to the log files section and within the section, you can see the S3 bucket name. Uh, you can see the S3 object. Now, S3 object is the same name as the name of the CloudTrail log file. Um, so if you are looking to find hash for a particular CloudTrail um, uh, log file, just copy the name of that object and search, and it will match with the S3 object here. And then obviously, we have the hash value, the algorithm, and the newest event time and oldest event time for all of these uh, different log sources. Um, so this is what a digest file looks like, guys. It's just uh, uh, it's just uh, uh, the hashes of all the different CloudTrail log files for a particular um, event time frame and this is what the file looks like all right so now let's switch to the aws command line and uh, see how we can verify or validate the integrity of these log files now aws provides a cool uh, way to do this very easily with the command line using the validate logs aws cli command however you have an option of doing this on your own using your own automation using your own scripts you have all the pieces with the hashes stored in the digest file uh, you can quickly verify those but if you're looking for a very easy way to do this just to test it out as we will be doing we'll be using the aws cli command called validate logs now the only thing that we have to pass here is obviously the arn of the cloud trail that you need to validate uh, but also the start time Right, uh, we are only providing the start time in this command because we want to monitor, we want to validate all the events that has happened post this time. But if we wanted to time bound this, we could also have provided the end time as well. Now, as you can see, the what the command is doing is validating the hashes of all the log files within this time cycle and comparing that with the hashes that are stored in the digest file. If the hashes that are computed and the hashes that are provided in the digest files match, that means the log file is valid. That is exactly what the output of this command is giving us. And uh, the summary of this is that the 16 log files within this time cycle are all valid, meaning the computed hash is the same as the hash in the digest file. Okay, so what if we did some mischief in this account? Like if we are an attacker or hacker and we are trying to hide our activity, wouldn't our first impulse be to just delete the log file? So let's just do exactly that. Let's find out a log file in our digest file, like this one, and delete this altogether from the S3 console. And uh, let's try to see, evaluate what happens once we do that and how will the AWS CLI validate logs be able to identify that? So now that our object is deleted, let me switch back to the CLI and run the validate uh, files command again. And what we can see from the output is that the log file that we just deleted shows up as invalid not found here. So you can imagine that if you had an automation around this, you can quickly detect that there were a loss trail of records in your cloud trail log files that some files have been deleted or some kind of a mischief has happened in your AWS cloud trail log files.
Now let's imagine that the attacker wants to be even more mischievous. That is, they don't want to delete from the log file, but want to change the log file ever so slightly that they hope that the change gets goes by undetected. So S3 objects are immutable. That is, you cannot change them or update them. But what you can do is you can delete the existing object and upload the object with the exact same name with the modifications that you want. So that is exactly what the hacker hopes to accomplish. Uh, the hacker picks up this file, uh, this JSON, JSON file, opens it up in the local command line, updates it with a minor change. That is, instead of the root, uh, they mention groot or groot. And then they save this file locally, convert it into a JSON format, and upload it back to the S3 bucket. But before uploading it, they will obviously delete the existing one. So otherwise, you wouldn't have two objects with the same name. So let's see what happens now with the AWS validate logs command and see what does that output now tell us with the file now very slightly changed, but it's still existing. The command output shows that the cloud that one of the CloudTrail log files is invalid, not found, and this is the one that we deleted earlier. But it also shows that the one that we just changed is also invalid, and the reason for that is because the hash value does not match. So the hash value of the file of the file that was originally created by AWS does not match the hash value of the new file or the file that's currently located. And so this does a good job of figuring out if there were any changes in the log file itself. That's it for the video, guys. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe to get more of these videos. Thank you.